Ken Commando. Saturdays on News Talk, KITV.com. 99.3 KITFM, Natchez. And 1280 KITAM, Yakima. Seven forty-five AM, twelve eighty FM, ninety-nine three News Talk KIT. It's the morning news. Dave Lance and you, and a clear blue sky and a beautiful Monday. Mm-hmm. Thanks to the weatherman for all that. Going to be hot today though, ninety-nine. Yeah, that's for sure. Hey, we continue our candidate interviews uh, today with uh, District Two candidates nine seven two five four eight one. That's our number. You'll find all kinds of information about these interviews and things. At News Talk KIT, we've got District 2 candidate Maud Scott in the house this morning. Good morning, Maud. you gotta got to come right up to that microphone, okay. Maud. you got to get real close to that microphone, just like I'm doing right there. Can it move? Or? It yes. can move. And it Drag can it over there, you betcha. Yeah. Yeah. Right can on. I be heard? There you go, right there. All right. There you go. Thank you. Maybe even a little closer, Maud, to okay. get a non-echoey kind of sound there. I uh, appreciate you coming in, and uh, appreciate you uh, stepping up to yeah. serve. This isn't your first rodeo, is it? <laughs> Not my first run? Yeah. It's No, it's not my first run. I lost track of how many times. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's the cool. uh, umpteenth you. time is a charm, yeah. as they say. Yeah. Um, as we've been telling all the candidates, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your time in the Valley, what you do, uh, family information, anything uh, that uh, would give folks a, an idea who Maud Scott is and what she's about. Well, I'm, she's, a, I, she's about seven, no, about 70 years old, yeah. yeah. That's close enough. Uh, that's close enough to say I'm yeah. 70. Um, been here 37 years. Um, Southeast Jackama, total time. And been um, active with my neighbors for that length of time on different community issues. And I don't know exactly what you want me to say. No, that's, that's fine. We just want to know, you know, did, um, uh, what did you know, you told us how long you've been here, your family members here in the valley? Uh, my husband is finally back in the valley after being uh, working out uh, of state and out of town for about 20 years. Oh, um, what's that like? I hope that's okay. I mean, oh well, oh, he's been back for seven, so we're okay. We're, good. Okay, <laughs> but um, th- that was a, one of the reasons that I had so much free time um, to get involved with civic activities. Going to council was a a frequent place I'd hang out and yeah. following issues that affected our neighborhood. Exactly, exactly. Dave? Well, at this point, uh, Maud, uh, we ask uh, all of our candidates the same question, and that is, um, what's your understanding of the job of a city council person? Um, for my money, it was kind of an eye-opener of what we could and couldn't do, uh, and I think there's a lot of misconceptions by a lot of people, and so we just kind of want to get a sense for what you see is the job of a council person? Well, it's a lot of work, is what I see. Uh, you don't just go to the meetings where uh, the audience is there and you make decisions as best you can, but you have background uh, activities such as committee responsibilities, mm-hmm. which each one would also involve a lot of reading and outside information as well, trying to get a full-range view of the topic at hand and then do the best you can to encourage citizens, this is, I think, an important part, to listen up and and understand the issues that affect them and look in depth at what the ramifications of either decision or any decision would be. And please get involved. Let us know what you're thinking, uh, whether we're on council or not. If people don't speak up, then they get the the government they deserve. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you've certainly spoke up over the years, that's for sure, um, on many different issues. Um, why Why are you running this time? What, I, what's What's pushing you into this race? Um, I'm walking with determination. I'm I'm not running. Um, I'm I'm walking with determination because I've been here 37 years, and having lived in the same neighborhood for 37 years, the same block of Union Street, the same 37 years, I've gotten to know my neighbors, but I've also gotten to know their lifestyles, their their problems, Um, and for the most part, I want to report, these are wonderful people, and our neighborhood uh, is dealt with 
by the outside world as one group of misbehaving uh, folks, and that's just simply not the case. My neighbors are decent, hardworking, family-oriented uh, folks that are trying to get a, a foundation for their family by buying homes. We're 51 percent homeowner occupied and the R1 district of of southeast Yakima and so that's that's why you're running excellent that's why I'm running Skills and abilities, Maude. Um, you don't have to obviously know the ins and outs of wastewater treatment or uh, uh, those kinds of things, even though those are some of the areas that you decide. But what, uh, what skills and abilities in a self-assessment here would you think that you have to uh, bring to the table that would make you an effective city council person? Well, I've got my ear to the ground for 37 years to see what is, what is going to affect us, and, and that my my i guess responses are colored by the years that i did not live in yakima i grew up in a city that was fort worth texas it was a singular city at the time and by the time we graduated high school we had begun building what is now called the metroplex uh it's one big conglomeration of off ramps freeways and um misery as far as i'm concerned uh L.A., Honolulu, San Francisco, Atlanta, upstate New York, Chicago. These are some places that I've lived as well before I got here. So when we hit Yakima and found Union Street, Mm -hmm. uh, it was like living in the country in the middle of a little city. And a historic city at that. Beautiful uh, turn-of-the-century buildings and a wonderful place. Well, that leads us right into uh, the uh, the next question. KIT News Time is 7:52. We are talking with Maud Scott, a District Two candidate for for the Yakima City Council. Um, I don't think this is going to be hard for you at all. What's the What's the best thing about Yakima? What's the best thing? What's the about best Yakima? thing about Yakima these days, Maud? Oh, um, that is a little hard. It's hard. Okay, <laughs> that right. is a little hard. All right. The best thing, I think that the the city is at a point where chaos is about to begin. And uh, that's how the world came into being, wasn't it? The, <laughs> the chaos in the universe. Well, we were about to have our own little bit of chaos, and that, that can be good or bad, depending how we ride it out. And that's the best thing about Yakima. That's the best thing happening that, about Yakima right now. I think it is. Um, right. we're, we're going to see what we're really made of as a, as a community. And... Uh, it's an interesting time. Well, the other side of that coin is the biggest challenge, and maybe you just gave that answer mm-hmm. too. Uh, biggest challenge facing yeah. a, a council person as they assess Yakima in this community. What are, and you can pick more than one, but uh, the, the challenges that lie ahead for a council person. Well, to to understand and navigate um, the tsunami, mm-hmm. I, I think, because it's. It's a change that's been a long time in the making, and maybe this is not the most perfect path, but we're on it, and I think it'll it'll turn out as well as we react to it. Are you, by that, it's kind of cryptic, but uh, let's see if we can define it. Are, are we talking about um, the Hispanic participation in government? Is that what you're talking about, or what are you talking about? I, I suppose that's it. I suppose that's it. Um, it's really more than that. It's, I think, a day of reckoning for the habit of this uh, community to view the east side in one one way. Um, I guess back in the 1930s is when they first started promoting go, go west with your investments. And um, about the time the Depression hit, the movement started coming back because of the price of gas, it was in, uh, around a nickel a gallon, and they, to save gas, they wanted to move back. But um, we we don't get a good we don't get a good rap on the east side. There are a lot of good things there. So, uh, with the Hispanics coming in uh, as they do in this election, we are subject to change and the change of the government. Yeah. Maud, uh, some things already in motion uh, in our city. Certainly people have opinions on, on all these issues one way or the other, that's for sure. Uh, not a lot of middle ground. Let's let's get your opinion on a couple of these issues. Uh, first of all, what's your take on the uh, the proposed Millennium Plaza? 
Well, I'm not, I'm not a fan of thinking that we can put something uh, here that's going to attract outsiders and that's going to solve our problem. I think our problem is homemade. The tendency, uh, as long as I've been here, to hear, oh, whatever you do, don't, don't go to the east side has now um, come back to haunt the downtown businesses. So I think we need to do some healing in downtown before we start redeveloping in such a dramatic manner and such a huge cost. How about uh, the uh, uh, ban on recreational marijuana? How do you feel about that? <laughs> I haven't even thought about that. Um, where That's another area of chaos. I don't know how we're going to solve that at, at City Council, but um, I haven't ever... I haven't got a formulated opinion okay. there. Okay. Just how stay about, away from the whole topic. How about public art? How do you feel about public art? And a lot of public art around downtown Yakima? You know, I don't spend a lot of time looking at public art in downtown Yakima, except as I drive past. And some of it I like, some of it kind of leaves me cold. Cold. You can you can put more art there uh, if that's what you can afford to do. But my art, my idea of public art would be to rebuild the historic appearance mm -hmm. of South Natchez, of the downtown uh, housing that we have left, the, the original buildings. I think Main Street is the way to get back to what Yakima is really all about. That program has been so successful in so many cities and it's got a, a long run of being uh, out there across the nation. It's long past time we got in step with that. How about the city's role in economic development and um, you know public safety? Public safety is one thing um, that they need to have a, a role in. I'm, I'm hoping we can get our neighborhoods back the homeless problem is a public safety issue to our neighborhood. And it's also a, a business issue with your downtown businessmen. They may not step up and talk about it in public meetings because mm -hmm. their customers come from throughout the city with all kinds of philosophies and, and involvements themselves with nonprofits. But um, by, by and large, it is a major public safety problem for us in our neighborhood and downtown, and it discourages business. We need to find a, a peaceful solution to it. But the uh, ACLU lawsuit, um, would you continue the appeal that's underway? Um, and what's your understanding of what happens uh, potentially down the road with, with the Texas case and all of that? I'm, I'm not... I don't have a good crystal ball on that one. I come from Texas, but I've been gone a long time. Um, I Would you continue the appeal that the city has in siding with uh, Texas and trying to uh, get out from under this $1.8 million bill, or would you pay it, walk away, and start living life without worrying about it, or what would you Well, I'm, I'm going to live life without worrying about it. I've, I think I said in the paper that I... That's going to settle itself out, and I don't feel like I have the wisdom to do that necessarily. But the, the issue I would like to look at with the Supreme Court is the one that they made on, um, how do you say this word, disparate mm -hmm. consequences of spending federal funding continually in areas of low income. You know the... the Washington Post had an article on it, and it talks about forms of discrimination, whether they're purposefully done or accidentally done, unknowingly done, are still harmful to neighborhoods for low-income people. And I find that a, a more interesting topic, something that we can do something about rather than where we are now with the ACLU case. Very good. Well, Scott, we wish you the best of luck. If you uh, move on in the primary, we hope to have you back and have a greater conversation down the road. Appreciate your time this morning. Fox News starts now.